So now we're going to take a closer look at the mechanism for free radical chlorination and free radical bromination. So, and the mechanisms here are very different than what you've seen for either SN1, SN2, E1, E2, or alkene or alkyne addition reactions. Uh, in this case, instead of a, a sequence of steps that, you know, one feeds into the other in a very linear fashion, we're going to find out that we have a series of steps uh, that we give classes to initiation, propagation, termination. Uh, and the reason we do this is because the propagation steps actually repeat over and over and over and over and over again um, before a termination step ever finishes up the reaction. So you might have the propagation actually repeating itself thousands or millions or billions of times before the reaction actually finishes. And it's in those propagation steps where we actually form our product. So in this case, our first step is the initiation step, and that's where we actually form some radicals to get going. So, and generally that requires either light, heat, or peroxide. So, and then you've usually got a sequence of two steps, uh, two propagation steps that repeat over and over and over again, where your product is formed. And again, there's our product right here in this example in the free radical chlorination of methane. Uh, generally, the way this works is you're going to form a carbon radical in the first propagation step and then form your product with that carbon radical in the second propagation step. You'll also notice that in your propagation steps, you never get an increase or decrease in the number of radicals present. So in this case, we start with a radical in the first propagation step and we end with a radical in the first propagation step. And so our overall concentration of radicals in our solution is going to stay the same. So if you notice in the initiation step, we didn't have radicals and then we formed two radicals. And so generally, in most initiation steps, you generally increase in concentration of radicals. So notice, look at our second propagation step, same thing as well. We've got one radical as a reactant, we've got one radical as a product. We're keeping the party going, as I like to say. Uh, I like to think of a radical reaction as a radical party. So in the first step, you've got to form radicals. So and then you just want to keep the party going. One radical, forms one radical and one radical forms one radical. So and notice that chlorine radical we form right here is just going to go back and repeat step two there, that first propagation step. And that's why these two propagation steps just repeat over and over and over and over again. But all good parties must come to an end and eventually two radicals meet, whether it's two chlorine radicals, a methyl radical and a chlorine radical, or two methyl radicals, it doesn't really matter. But if any two radicals meet, you have two radicals turning into something that is no radicals. And that's your evidence of a termination step. It always leads to an overall decrease in the concentration of radicals in your solution. Um, cool, one other thing I wanted to focus on right here uh, is this propagation step right here. It is this step that is the big reason for why chlorination is not so selective and bromination is very selective. So if we look here for methane here, uh, this step is a little bit endothermic. For bromination, it is a lot endothermic. So instead of eight kilojoules, it's a much larger number. And so it is a much less favorable reaction for bromination than it is for chlorination. And that's why bromination says, you know what? Whatever carbon radical you form, you form the best one. This is not a favorable reaction. We're going to form that best carbon radical. Whereas chlorination says, yeah, you know, this is not the worst step in the world. Form whatever radicals you like. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe it's a little better to form the more substituted ones, but just form them all. And so chlorination is not being quite so selective because this uh, particular step is a little more favorable than it is with bromination. Uh, let's take a deeper look at the arrow pushing involved in the mechanisms for both free radical chlorination and bromination. They go by the same mechanism, or at least directly analogous mechanisms. So let's take a closer look at that mechanism. And the reaction we're specifically going to look at here is the free radical bromination of propane. So in this case, you'll notice that in the initiation step, propane is not even involved. It's just bromine. And we use light to get it started. And we use light of just the right frequency to break this bromine-bromine bond here. So and that's going to form two bromine radicals. So, and then one of those bromine radicals is going to run into a propane molecule so and abstract a hydrogen from that propane molecule. And so in this case, Notice some funky stuff here. So one, we got this whole initiation, propagation, termination. But two, we're often doing what's called homolytic bond cleavage, where bonds, there's two electrons in there, but the two electrons go different directions. And when you're moving just one electron, you have these half-headed arrows. Same thing's going to happen here. We're going to form a new bond between this bromine and the hydrogen here. And the hydrogen, so the bond it had with carbon here, one electron goes to form the new bond to bromine, and the other one goes back to the carbon atom there. And if we see what we got here, we're going to have a carbon radical. So, but we're also going to have just formed a molecule of HBr. 
So that carbon radical now is going to react with another molecule of Br2. So it turns out we use just enough light here in the initiation to only uh, result in a small concentration of bromine radicals. You've got a lot of intact bromine molecules left in your solution. So in this case, we're going to form now a bond between our radical and one of the bromines. And that bond also breaks homolytically, so the other bromine gets the other electron. This is going to form your product as well as another bromine radical. So it turns out these are your propagation steps. Whereas the first one here was your initiation step. So single initiation step in this reaction, and that's pretty common. We'll see one exception to that. Uh, but then two propagation steps. And again, it is these propagation steps that actually form your product. So and we formed a bromine radical in the second one, that can go back and repeat the first propagation step. And so these two steps, again, can just repeat over and over and over again, uh, millions or zillions of times, forming product each and every sequence. Uh, but eventually, all good parties come to an end. So, and we're either going to have a couple of bromine radicals bump into each other. So, so and if they do, they will form a molecule of Br2. So we went from two radicals to no radicals. That is the hallmark of a termination step. You could also have a bromine radical bumping into one of the propane radicals. So as long as any two radicals meet, that's going to be a termination step. And it turns out we would indeed form something that's essentially the same as our product here, but this is not where most of your product gets formed. Most of the, most of the product hands down gets formed in the propagation steps. And then finally, we might have a couple of the propane radicals react with each other. And in this case, let's get that to black again. You'd form this lovely product. And again, all three of these go from two radicals to no radicals and are termination steps they result in the reaction slowing down as we're reducing the overall concentration of radicals in the solution. Uh, all the radical mechanisms we'll study follow this pattern of initiation, then propagation, then termination. They all form product during a two reaction sequence that we call the propagation steps. They keep the party alive, forming product every sequence. The chlorination mechanism is exactly analogous using Cl2 instead of Br2.